was watching a documentary the other day, and uh, they were talking about capitalism, and they almost said it with disdain, as though it's a bad thing. And I realized that capitalism is often misunderstood by people, and it's one of those things that it does mean a certain thing. However, a lot of people like to add a lot of other things that have nothing to do with it, or sometimes they do, but they don't necessarily have anything to do with it. So I thought I would just explain what capitalism is. So capitalism is the private means of production. That's essentially what the word means. And so to give an example, we could look at an apple farmer. In a free market capitalist system, the farmer would own the means of production. So he would privately own the land or he would lease it. He would own the tree. It's his property. He'd maybe own a ladder, maybe some uh, buckets or, or uh, baskets to put the apples in. That would all be privately owned. So those are the means of production. And maybe part of the capital that he has, not only the uh, the ladder and the land and such. Maybe he also has some cash. He has some money. And either he owns it outright or he's made a free and voluntary loan agreement with somebody else. And he says, hey, I need to borrow a hundred bucks so I can hire some people to help me pick the apples. And so then this farmer takes on all the risks. And if he chooses to spread that out with a bank, you know, if the, the bank's taking a, a, a risk if they're loaning him money, but he's taking on all the risk this farmer is. And the farmer gets all of the reward if there's a good apple harvest. So the, the farmer hires the people and they use the ladders and they use the baskets and they harvest the apples. And if the farmer harvests a lot of apples, it's a good year. And all the other farmers around there are also harvesting a lot of apples. Well, then there's a lot of supply and you know, if, if the people in the area only need a thousand apples, that's the only demand that exists, and 3,000 apples are produced, well, then the, the price of apples is going to be a lot lower. On the other hand, if, if people want a thousand apples and only 800 are produced, well, then there's going to be a premium on the price of apples. And so the, the farmer, the capitalist, predicts what is going to happen what what the supply and demand circumstances will be are his neighbors going to grow a lot or a little is it going to be a a good year with rain and sun or is it not uh, are people going to be hungry for apples or are they going to want other things and it's a gamble and this farmer is betting his annual livelihood maybe his whole life he's betting that it's going to be a good year for apples and he's betting that he has the right number of ladders and helpers and and all of that so this system is essentially free market capitalism that's what that's that's what that is it's a private means of production so what would the opposite of that be well the opposite would be that the farmer does not own the ladder or the land or the profits or the risk and so that would be a state owned. In other words, the government would own the land. The government would own the labor, essentially. They would uh, order people to do the work. And I, I think slavery would be an accurate word, but it's, it's a nasty word. So we'll just say that, that the government would assign <laughs> certain people to go do the, the labor. The government would be the owner of the latter. The government would be the one that takes on the, the risk and would get the reward. Of course, the government only gets money through taxation, through taking from people who do the production. So I guess they wouldn't really have any risk if they did it. If they win, if there's a good apple season, they don't really win either. It's not like they're going to share it with the people who they steal the money from for the tax money. So which system is better? Is it better to have the ladder and the land and the profits and the, and the risks owned privately or owned by a government? Well, my opinion, and, I, and I've never really heard any good arguments otherwise, my opinion is that a farmer should be allowed to 
do what he wants. If he wants to go get a ladder and take all the risks and and bring together a ladder and, and baskets and workers and everybody is making these voluntary agreements with each other, then, oh, gosh, I hope he does really well. If he goes completely broke, yeah, not my problem. If he does really well, yeah, yay for him. Now, the the people who don't like this, what do they say is wrong with this system? Well, there aren't very many real arguments. I mean, one argument would be if it's private means of production, then people aren't going to take good care of the land. They're going to treat it poorly. Um, and this is kind of the part of the sustainability religion has this concern. And that is that the environment would suffer if people could have their uh, profits, if, if their profit motive was the only thing guiding them and there were no regulations, then, you know, apple farmers wouldn't be so much of a problem. But let's say loggers. Loggers would go out and just cut down all the trees in the world so that they could sell it and make a bunch of money on wood. So that's one of the arguments. But, you know, that, and I wasn't even thinking about this, but th that example that I just gave, what, what, what do you think would happen? What would happen if we look at supply and demand? And if some greedy capitalist uh, logger built up a huge empire, let's say it's it's Bill Gates and, and Soros, like those are two wealthy dudes. Let's say that they bought up a bunch of uh, woodland, of timber, forests, and they were just cutting all of the trees down and pumping them into the market. Well, what would happen... If only so much lumber is needed, only so much firewood is needed, and a ton of it is being pumped into the system, well, then the prices would go down, right? And so what would you do if you were Bill Gates or George Soros and you're a, a very intelligent business person who wants as much money as they can get? Would you want to keep pumping a bunch of stuff out and have the prices go way down? Well, of course not. You, you you wouldn't do that. That wouldn't make good sense to you. What you would do is you would think about how you could make money every single year. You'd look at all of your land. You'd say, okay, trees mature every, I don't know, 30 years. So we'll cut a, uh, a, thir a 30th of the forest down every year, and then we'll replant it right afterward. And then every single year we'll have some profit coming in. Well, that kind of management is what happens if there's a free market capitalist society. In a government-run organization or, or a system, then a politician would say, well, everybody's complaining that the price of lumber and firewood is too high, so let's cut down three years' worth right now, and that will make prices way lower, and therefore everybody will love us because we've reduced the prices of stuff. Well, then there's going to be a problem in 27 years, uh, or at some point there's going to be a problem because things weren't properly allocated. It wasn't the market. And when we, I say the market, I mean 7 billion people. 7 billion people are the market. What does the market want? Well, what do 7 billion people want? They will tell you, not with their words, but with their wallets, what it is that they want. Do they want smartphones? Yeah, sure looks like it. They're spending money on them. Do they want buggy whips? Well, not for the last hundred years, ever since cars came about. Buggy whip manufacturers, the, the market has said, hey, we don't, we don't need many of those anymore. And so those businesses have gone by the wayside and the people have learned new skills. So, so that would be the one argument would be that uh, uh, in, a, in a free market environment, in a capitalist environment, People would use up all the resources and, and wouldn't, there would no longer be beautiful forests and such. And, and that's just absolutely not true. It's, it's actually just the opposite. Uh, another example or another thing that people say uh, capitalism is not good. Uh, the reason is that some people will not win in that game. And some people will work very hard and they'll take risks and they'll, you know, sometimes win, sometimes lose, but they're going to keep plugging away and working really hard, and they're going to end up doing well in life. And then the people who don't have much work ethic or ingenuity or 
smartness or any of those things, those people will just end up being poor and they will have different incomes. They will not have equal incomes to the people who are producing a lot of good things. And so an example, going back to the farmer and the, the apples, is that the farmer is working, you know, 16 hours a day and and puts his house up as equity to get the loan to hire more people to help pick apples. And he invested in the ladder and has spent all of the time sanding it and painting it so it'll last a long time and just putting all of this effort in. And there's a chance that if things don't go well, he could lose everything. He could lose his house. But he took all of those risks and he worked so hard and he pulled together the equipment and the people and all these resources. And then at the end of the day, the farmer, hopefully, or at the end of the year, the farmer ends up with a nice, good check. He gets some money out of it. He's rewarded by the market, by the people around him who wanted apples. He's rewarded for his good choices and hard work. Well, meanwhile, across the street, some guy just kind of likes to sit in his lawn chair and not work that hard. You know, maybe he'll go out and work for an hour. Maybe he likes to, to paint pictures. Nobody really wants to buy them because he doesn't do a, a good enough job that somebody would spend their own money to do it. So the only way he can really sell them is uh, through public art kind of opportunities. So if, you know, governments come to them, and of course, <laughs> it's not that government bureaucrats own money that they're spending, so they don't really care what the art looks like, uh, you know, if it's good art or, or not, if anybody enjoys it. So they'll buy the art from this person, and, and, and maybe the person doesn't sell that much, and they end up making very little money. Well, the amount of money they make at the end of the year is not equal to what the apple farmer earned. And so some people say, well, that's not fair that the lazy, unproductive person shouldn't get the same amount as the farmer. And I, I don't know, I think that people are serious when they say that. It doesn't seem to make sense. Um, I guess if one's worldview is that everyone should get exactly the same, regardless of how much effort they put into it, I guess that would be like, no matter how well you play a game, you win a trophy. And if there's a race or like a marathon and there are 30,000 people running in it, like in the big cities, I guess it would mean that everybody would get a first place trophy. I guess that would be equality, but it doesn't, like the world doesn't work that way. Uh, so that, that, that argument really doesn't make any sense. I'm trying to think of other arguments for free market capitalism. Um, I, th I think part of it is greed. Some people say that that some people just want to make a lot of money. And yes, I, I would say they absolutely do. I don't see greed as being a problem. Greed, the definition of greed, is when you really, really want a bunch of something. <laughs> and that could be admiration. So somebody is greedy for love and admiration. Or maybe someone else is greedy for money. Or someone else is greedy about their time and they're only... They want to go out and spend so much time having fun and relaxing and spending time with their family and friends. And they're so greedy with their time, they're only willing to spend 40 hours a week being productive with their employer. So I guess that could be a type of greed. But it's okay to be greedy as long as you don't do anything bad along with it. So if you're greedy and then you decide to steal, well, that's a problem. But the greed isn't the problem. It's the stealing that's the problem. So... The fact that some people are going to work hard, take big risks, get lucky, get unlucky, whatever, and end up with more or less uh, in a rational world, I can't imagine that really being a, a pro something that anybody else should be concerned about. Like We're each responsible for creating our own lives, and those of us who drink too much beer and eat too much food will likely end up with diabetes or a heart attack or something like that. You kind of reap what you sow, and it's a risk you take if that's what you want. Uh, if you want to spend an hour a day for your whole life exercising and eating right and meditating and, and doing all kinds of good things for your health, then you, know, you can probably live longer with fewer diseases. And same thing with going out and 
having an apple farm versus sitting on a lawn chair and drawing lousy pictures. Um, kind of up to each of us what we choose to do. So that was just my little take on capitalism as I think about it. Uh, capitalism, again, the private means of production versus government-owned means of production. Let me know if I missed any key aspects. I, I think I covered it well, but if I missed anything, please do let me know. Please do subscribe. Please, if this was of some value to you, I'd love it if you'd share it with a friend.